Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to ATW Best of the Best. We are live from Chicago, Illinois. The fans are ready. I'm ready. The question is, are you ready to go? We got plenty of matches here for you tonight. The first half of Best of the Best, we are going to see six-man tag team action with a caveat. The East Coast Championship is going to be on the line in that one as well. We will see the Women's East Coast Championship up for grabs when we see Marley challenge Alex Parker as well. So many matches here tonight. ETW Tri-State Championship up for grabs as Jester defends against longtime rival now JG as well. The Women's World Champion Jessica Faith will be defending against Morgan Quinn and in the main event tonight Billy Paragon will be defending or I'm sorry Billy Paragon will be challenging his best friend in the best of the best finals who is walking home with the honor of being called best of the best and getting a title shot at the world heavyweight champion we will find out welcome everybody here joining us live in chat and for anybody who may be catching up on the replay over on YouTube. Thank you guys for coming in and checking out the product. Hope you guys enjoy the show here tonight. As we are getting it started with the championship battle royal. For the women and uh, whoever wins here will get a shot at either the tri-state championship or the East Coast championship, whichever they choose. And that'll be at the uh, the next network special. How are we doing tonight, guys? Welcome, welcome. We got Insane Manny, Justin, Vince. Uh, who else do we have? Red. We got our new follow, Kirk. So many of y'all joining us here tonight. Rogue, as well as anybody who is lurking. Thank you guys for coming out. We really do appreciate it here tonight again. Eight woman battle royal here to determine who is going to challenge for either the tri state women's tri state or the women's East Coast Championship. How is the audio for everybody? Is that coming through for you guys? As long as it's coming through for you guys, because we're having a little bit of an audio issue here on our side. Bear with us for a second while we try to figure it out. What's going on? Ah, George is looking at me just as baffled as I'm looking at him. Oh, George is full. <laughs> Give me one second here, guys.
Well, it wouldn't be a network special if we didn't have some kind of technical issue, right? This is considerably odd. That's right, Manny. Get the thumbs up in the chat. For Captain Thumbs, at the who is a, uh, I would say, a strong pick in my eyes for this type of matchup here. I don't know. It makes no sense. I'm not getting any of the audio from the broadcast, but I'm getting audio from everything else. <laughs> I'm getting notification signals on my my end. It is literally just the audio that's coming out of the arena. Interesting. Well, that's something we'll have to. Uh, Diagnose later, I guess. Right, here we go, I believe. I'm trying to keep count here. I'm gonna say this is the last participant entering here. Kane Katsuyori. Had a hell of a matchup against her daughter on Uprising. In the semifinals, unfortunately, was not able to pick up the victory, though. That distinction would go to Yuna. And as we'll see tomorrow, Yuna will face off against Aseo Ikata in the finals for the women. And tonight, we will get the finals for the men again. Main event, Billy Paragon versus Vince Crow. Best friends do battle to be called the best. Exciting night. Glad you're all here with us tonight. And this is not a bad way to get it started. This will be traditional battle royal rules. You go up and over the top rope, both feet touching the floor. You will be then eliminated from the match. Last woman standing, last woman standing, excuse me, will be the number one contender for a championship. Of course, that will be on. Oh no, I, f I miscounted. Tiffany is the last contestant here. Interesting outfit for Tiffany here. Never 
nice. As I was saying, they will challenge for either the Women's Tri-State or the Women's East Coast Championship. That'll be at the next network special. Especially from what it seems like will be probably... I want to say Spring Break, but it may actually end up being the Uprising exclusive No Escape. I'm not sure. We will have to see about that. <laughs> Insane. God damn. I mean, not for nothing. She's coming out here looking like she's a little red riding hoe, so. Not gonna lie, though. that, that She don't look bad in a one-piece uh, one piece suit here, so. But there we go again. Up and over the top rope. Both feet hit the floor. You are eliminated from the match. And, oh man! What we got newcomer Sophia Blackheart in here. Tiffany looking like she's doing a little bit of magic there. And oh, Gwena was eliminated by Apathy here. And again, Sophia. Sophie, excuse me. Her first time in a matchup like this. First time at an opportunity to lay claim to a number one contenders match. That's where we got plenty of veterans in there. Epsi, Gwen, Jane, Megan Harper, Isabella Hernandez. There's a who's who of uh, female contestants in there. Yeah, did you like that one, uh, Manny? Little <laughs> red riding hoe. I couldn't help it. She had that. She had the cape and the cow and all that on. I, I couldn't help myself. I had to. Nothing against Tiffany. And, oh, look at that. Look at Tiffany. Her and Gwen Jane had the same idea at the same time. A lot of action in the ring here right at the moment. I'm do my best to call the action. And, ooh, spine buster. Kane Katsuyori's in trouble here. Jordan. It's Sophie in the corner there. Sophie, though. Nice reverse there. Tiffany in trouble now. That was a hell of a powerbomb. Why, Jordan? Nice transition into the powerbomb as well. And, ooh, there's a fine closing on by Sophie. Putting in a lot of work here in this uh, battle royal here. Apathy skinning the cat here, possibly. Oh, bye bye, Tiffany! We spoke of veterans earlier. There was some veteran instinct by Isabella. Beta Tiffany in and pulled the top rope down. Tiffany went flying over that top rope. Suplex onto her head. And, oh, bye bye, Sophie! And I think she hit her head on the way down. You hear that metal clank? I'm now looking for a second elimination here with Apathy. Ooh. We are down to what? Six now. Gwen lining to take out Akane here. Katsuyori in trouble here. Gwen. Oh! Don't know exactly what happened there, but it looked like Jordan collided with Gwen and actually ended up saving Akane Katsuyori there. <laughs> Why did you throw your remote across the room there, O'Connor? Oh, no! Evan, they just eliminated Isabella with a nice hair Karana. Over the top rope. Harper now in trouble. Or, excuse me, Jordan in trouble. With powerbomb to the knees by Harper. Fireman's carry takedown by Jordan. Look back and forth action right now between Harper and Lee. And oh, when Misjudged that shot there. Thought at 
Sophie may have been walking more clear, more closer to the ring. Oh, Sophie getting eliminated. Yeah. Unfortunate, but hey, man, that's a big spot for only having, what, two or three matches already in the company? And, oh, no! Jordan coming in with a rocking kick, taking Apathy out. Gwen got eliminated. Harper just got eliminated. We're down to three. And if Akane Katsuyori helps Jordan down here, they can eliminate a huge threat in Apathy, who is honestly, I would say, probably the odds-on favorite to win this. And now Akane Katsuyori assessed the situation. Oh, got kicked in the face for it, though. I was able to get back in the ring. And Jordan, bad idea to keep your back to Apathy, but Apathy seems to be staying back, letting uh, Akane Katsuyori and Jordan take care of themselves. And Kane now with Jordan in a precarious position. And oh, here we go. Apathy now. Gonna help. Oh, my, my, Jordan. Oh, look at this fight. I want to see this singles match. Apathy and Akane Katsuyori. These two have met a few times before, and it did not disappoint. I damn sure it ain't going to disappoint here tonight. In night one of best of the best. And, ooh. Apathy with the arm captured up to the shoulder and then devastating shots to the ribs. But, oh, right hand blocked. And Apathy was winding up for that one. Akane just tossed her into the corner. And Akane won her knee right through Apathy's face. What is Apathy thinking here? Looking for an elimination? No, gets an elbow. What? The foot. And oh, both of them went for a move at the same time. Apathy was just a hair faster on that exchange. And oh, those kicks to the ribs ain't gonna make you feel good. Oh! And full of hair, tossed her into the corner. I think Apathy's looking for another knee here. Uh-oh. This is gonna be bad. That one looked like it caught her right underneath the chin. Oh man, straight up gripping her by the throat here. Oh! Gut shot. That'll make you gasp for breath. And, ooh, tried to get arm control there, but Apathy said no way. Jose. And now. Turnabout's fair play. Apathy went for the wrist control. Akane said no. Got caught. Knee to the face. That's got to be the third or fourth knee that Apathy is taking straight to the face and with almost no residual effects. Akane now, handful of hair, trying again to get Akane Katsuyori over the top rope. Oh no! Looking for a clothesline over the top rope and, uh, and Akane Katsuyori low bridged her. Smart move by the veteran. Not saying that Apathy's not a veteran, but man, that's the almost 20 years experience that Akane Katsuyori has under her belt. Actually, I think it might even be more than 20 years. Well, Kane Katsuyori will have a shot at either the Women's Tri-State Championship or the Women's East Coast Championship, whoever that may be. Currently, it'll be against either Angel Tyler or Alex Parker. So big congratulations to Kane Katsuyori, but we're going to move right along because we got an extreme match coming up for the Extreme Championship. Who is walking out of here with the championship and probably a shit ton of bruises and probably a couple of stitches? Is going to be the man from Australia? The crocodile, if you will, Luke Marshall? Or will it be the walking battle tank himself, aptly named 
tank. If I'm not mistaken, this may, I believe this is the first time that uh, Marshall is challenging for the Extreme Championship. Not really a, uh, I would say a title that is befitting his station. As it's a little more, as he would put it, barbaric, but I mean, championship gold is championship gold. As Manny said in his uh, review on Discord earlier today, will Luke Marshall bring prestige to the Extreme Championship? I don't know. With the way Tank's been rolling lately, that is going to be a hard task, even if you are Luke Marshall. Here comes the extreme champion tank. I really, I, I don't know why, but I really want to see him come out cosplaying as a transformer that turns into a tank. <laughs> it would be perfect. <clears throat> I can't remember off the top of my head if there is a Transformer that is a battle tank. I'm sure there is. I haven't seen the cartoon or played with toys or have read the comics in years. I know it's not in the live action. The live action. Brain is drawing a blank. This one is going to be, as we so aptly named it, a Taka Fest. That's not what we call it. What the hell do we call it? A Taka Special. Man, I can't wait for vacation. <laughs> one more night, EG. One more night. Sammy officiating this one. Most of the matches tonight will be officiated by Darnell. Like Sammy pitching in here to help out. As he is oh, scheduled for tomorrow to be the lead officiate. Officiate. Officiator? Words. Tomorrow's festivities. Spicy pack special. This is an extreme match. True. 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 Would be easy work for Tank. I mean, of course we say that, and Tank's the one laying on the ground right now. <laughs> Words. Words are heard. I'm actually thinking about, uh, I'll be picking up, uh, that that t-shirt with another couple other products from the merch store so if you guys haven't yet go check out the merch over on the merch store use exclamation point merch that'll bring up the link got some pretty cool shit over there if you will. we got a dozen or so different product lines and stuff so go check it out and it's actually quite affordable even with the inflation thank you insane oh many insane beat you to it Womp womp. Although I should probably give a womp womp for myself because that was just a terrible transition for the merch. And, oh, a kick right to the ankle. I don't care how big and tough you are, you get. You snap your ankle, you crack or in any way injure your ankle. That is going to be very hard for you to be mobile. 
Who now take it on the outside here. Oh man, net breaker on the outside. There was a tank in the film. The film's called Brawl. But in D1, Blitzwing. G1, what is that? Generation 1? I think I actually remember something being called Blitzwing. That's what it may have been. Turned into a tank and a jet. Hmm. Wait, there is one in the... Was there a tank in the... In the live action? I do not remember that. Marshall trying to introduce a chair here, but Tank said no way. And as we've seen recently, Tank does not like to use weapons in these extreme matches. He just likes to take people on the outside and beat the crap out of them. Oh so yeah, mix of a tank and a jet. That's every pilot's tank who's first longer. I mean, honestly, out of the two, Tank's seem to be more difficult to pilot though just because it's extremely close quarters so. i actually got i was i actually got the honor to sit in a, what was it, an m1 battle tank i think it was you want to talk about crammed quarters man you couldn't move an you couldn't even move like an eighth of an inch without pushing a button <laughs> My bad, I was cooking some chicken tenders. Oh, where the hell are my tenders at, man? I want some chicky. I want some chicky tenders, man. Not fair, I tell you. Not fair at all. But it's all good. Uh, it's all good, Red. No worries, no worries. Okay, yeah, you meant Generation 1 with that. That's what I figured. <clears throat> that would be the classic cartoon that came out in what? I think it was 86? I was three years old when that came out. God damn it, I'm old. And Brawl was barely seen. Yeah, I don't even remember there being a battle tank or even just... Just even a, a, a tank in general in the, the live films, so... I mean, that right there tells you how important he was. <laughs> it's like how they did my boy Barricade dirty. In the jail for er, in the in the jail in the the movie for like three quarters of the movie and then like he just disappeared out of nowhere. But anyway, as we talk about Transformers here, we got ass kicking action on screen right now. It's Tank and Marshall have been going back and forth here, just pelting the hell out of each other. Oh God, no! Choke bomb on the outside. Oh. That is, that's going to jack up your spine. I don't care how big and how tough you are. As you can see, fatigue starting to sit in here. Exhaustion as these two keep tossing each other over and over again on the concrete. Marshall's got the chair again. Oh, right across the chest. Across the chest in the midsection. And oh, Joel's the croc with the grapevine. Unfortunately, though, he's got to get him back in the ring. I mean, he could put him to sleep and then drag him into the ring, but as much as they want to fight on the outside, that's fine. Pinfalls and submissions have to be inside the ring. And Golden Bomb on the chair. I don't know which one was worse. Oh, God. Those fucking Michael Bay movies are funny mostly because of the equations. Dude, if you literally just want to, like, a badass, just dude film where you can just turn it on and eat, like, popcorn and shit, that's definitely the Michael Bay, the Michael Bay films. That's like testosterone turned up to like a hundred. <laughs> the Michael Bay explosions. Now back in the ring, both men realizing they can't win this on the outside. Big boot for Tank there, as now he tries to pick apart Marshall here. Trying to do massive damage to that trapeze muscle, making it harder for the shoulder to move. Or he 
referee's just gonna punch him straight in the freaking face. Jesus, these two are belting the hell out of each other. And now's not a good time to uh, be flexing with Tank getting back to his feet, even if it is by the use of the ropes. Marshall in control here, looking to roll Tank over. Two, and oh, that was a close one. And you see how, even in an extreme match, Marshall still making sure Luke's, what was that, right arm was locked into his body, but that way he couldn't reach for the ropes. Now, uh, granted, there are no rope breaks in this match, but... This goes to show uh, Marshall's aptitude for wrestling. I mean, not for nothing. It's not every day. Oh, God. Right on the stomach. It's not every day you get to wrestle the old school ways of KBW where... You know, weapons are allowed, there's no rope breaks, no disqualifications, you can go on the outside. You know, that extreme style. Where we actually got the concept for our extreme matches. Two, Marshall! Close, close, close two count there. Yeah, that's what we used to do back in, that was our normal matches in KBW. I don't think we ever had in a traditional wrestling match back in KBW. I think that's why TWF hated us so much. That's why they wanted to buy us out. And, oh, Marshall's in trouble here. Elevated triangle choke by Tank. And once he locks that in, it's usually night night forever's on the receiving end. And yep. Marshall looks like he is done. Hey, what's up, Teddy? Oh, this might be the final nail. Tag with the choke bomb. And he's going to go for a full body press here. And no, Marshall still kicks out. And Marshall. Back body drop. Going to look for a pin. Two. That's what's up. And besides that, how you doing tonight, man? And there goes Marshall right back to his his wrestling ways. He went for wrist control here. It's not about wrestling here. It's about beating the crap out of your opponent. That way you can get his shoulders down for the three by any means necessary to walk out of here with that extreme championship. I think that may be Marshall's Achilles heel in this situation. He's not accustomed to this style of, of match. I mean, granted, he's all, he is all about that wrestling life. You know, he wants to bring prestige back to ETW, as he says. But he's a little out of his element here, and I think, ultimately, if he does end up losing this, it may be because of that fact alone. And again, Jaws at a crock locked in. Grapevine applied and everything. Not going to get you the win, though. Oh! May not even needed it. May not even have needed it because Hank able to break the grip. Rib breaker. Ooh, more or less Tank's territory here now. I'm not saying Marshall can't stand in an all-out brawl, but it's not his forte. And oh! Side. Christ. Marshall lining up. He'd be thinking another. Oh, he's looking for another golden bomb. Jesus. And these fans of Chicago, they are liking what they are seeing. Bringing them back to the old days. That flatliner, I was going to say, may have not tanked out, but tank. Showing some signs of life. You know, back elbow. And that one caught him flush in the nose. I think I see a little bit of blood. I think Marshall may be bleeding. And, ooh, got shot. 
And both men are going to be feeling this tomorrow. Oh! Nice reversal there by Marshall. And a gut shot put Tank on his knees. This goes to show you no matter how big or tough oh, you are, you get shot right to the gut. A good shot to the gut. You're going to be dropping. Marshall getting introduced to the steps. Yeah, it looks like Marshall's got some blood on his face. And oh, y'all suck a cutter by Tank. The Tank doing a little bit of a happy dancer. He's going to be very proud of himself as he delivers a DDT to the, the head of Luke Marshall. Oh, no. Oh, Tank so close to the steps. Choke bomb. And at this point, I think it's all adrenaline between these two. Jesus, these guys are going to be hurting tomorrow. And, oh, Mongolian chop. Throat thrust. These guys are digging into the bag now. And a swing out your Nagi. The tank almost went into the guardrails there. Marshall seems to be in firm control here at the moment. And of course, as I say that, Tank is going to lay him out with a stiff clothesline. And another red breaker. And you can see it, the, uh, the exhaustion in these shots. This match is taking a lot out of them, as you can imagine. And now it's not time to be showing your pledge to wrestling! As it cost Marshall there, he just got military press into the mat. Two, no! Marshall's still very much alive. Double leg takedown. And I'll tell you what, guys. The rest of tonight and tomorrow is going to be rough because my throat is already killing me. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting night. And Tank, we're going to end it here. And, wait a minute. Tank having some trouble here, it looks like. I think Marshall got the back of his head. I can't tell. Now finally able to get some shots to the top of the head. And, oh, lost him aside. Nice little block there by Marshall. As I said, oh, the pump kick. It looked like he gripped the back of Tank's head to try and get him to stop. And followed it up with a good couple of right hands. Tank. Yosaka Cutter! On point! Oh, Tank looking to end this. Is it enough? It is! Tank is going to retain in a in spectacular fashion, I might add. But what a hell of a match. Indeed, you did insane. I mean, not for nothing and not taking anything away from Luke Marshall. This was definitely outside of his comfort zone. I can almost guarantee. You know, Marshall is a guy of structure and rules. He likes those traditional wrestling matches. And so he kind of came into this one with the deck already stacked against him. Tank lives for this shit. He loves it. So, I mean, you, you kind of think the scale was tipped against him a little bit. Now, you get Tank in a, in a, in a traditional wrestling match, I, I go with Marshall all day long. Even though Tank is a, a beast.
But I uh, will say this, man. Marshall did not make it easy on Tank. He had to earn it. He had to earn it. But we go from the Extreme Championship match, a successful, successful defense. We are now going to see the East Coast Championship up for grabs in a very unique style of matchup here. So as you can imagine, if any member of the T.O.P. scores the pinfall or submission here, Tonga will retain his East Coast Championship. But if a member of Perfection scores the pinfall or submission, that member will then win the East Coast Championship. So if Luke, if Luke Marshall, if Logan Wolf scores the pinfall or submission, Logan Wolf will then become the East Coast Champion. If Romeo gets the pinfall or submission, Romeo will become the East Coast Champion. And for any particular reason, if Johnny LaBeouf is able to secure the pinfall or submission, he will then become the East Coast Champion. And the only reason I say it like that is because Johnny honestly wanted nothing to do with the East Coast Champion Tonga, and I don't blame him. He thinks Romeo and Logan are crazy because they're they're trying to topple the monster known as Tonga to where it's even caused some friction between perfection as we've seen over the past couple of weeks, but looked like uh, Romeo and Logan have buried the hatchet yesterday, or not yesterday, excuse me, on Thursday on Uprising. They seem like a, a solid unit here at least coming out together. We'll see if that uh, reflects during the match. Uh, they came out here and had a, a nice heart-to-heart, uh, -heart, if you will. It was actually kind of nauseating, if you ask me. They were sharing a lot of feelings in the ring. <laughs> it wasn't a particular place where you share your feelings, but hey, they, they worked out their problems. They seem to be on the same page here, so we'll see how it goes here tonight. And Tonga, gotta say, putting a lot of trust in his compatriots in the Tower of Power. Because he can lose his championship even if he's not in the pinfall or the mission. So if the Freak or if uh, Kyle Angelo gets pinned here, they bye-bye East Coast Championship. I don't understand why Tonga agreed to this, but... He must have a lot of faith in himself and in his uh, his partners here tonight. There it is, the gold that these six men are fighting for. We'll put an asterisk next to Johnny LaBeouf's name because he's doing it reluctantly. <laughs> He's here to help out his brothers in arms. Basically, all, the only reason why he's here, he, he wanted nothing to do with the, with the champ.
matchup underway. Looks like Johnny and Kyle are getting it started off here. A little bit of catch wrestling. And Johnny getting short pin. into the ropes here are now now looking for a clean oh break Johnny with a bit of a cheap shot there break on the waist lock Johnny went behind and a takedown Self tag pins Angela. I mean, we'll have to see. It seems like all the perfections on the same page at least. So I mean, that's that's good, right? All you guys are all always about uh, betrayal and stuff. <laughs> like, uh, honestly, though, it's hard to say. Uh oh, we got stuff going on here. What's going on? Is that Veer Mahan? Are you the Veer? The guy who's still tr still attempting to come the, to WWE Raw? <laughs> welcome Veer Mahan to the Extreme Gaming Alliance. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. Glad you're here. And we hope you are enjoying yourself here tonight. Bringing us up to 720. My counter here in, in the chat. Oh. Romeo, dangerous territory here. Yeah, the funny thing is, is Veer has been coming to Raw for like 40 weeks now. <laughs> like, oh, uh, it's too funny. I've been seeing nothing but vignettes for him for like the past like six months. Romeo, neckbreaker on the freak. I'm not gonna lie, I honestly missed the tag there, but I'm sure he did. Kyle now spit. Diff kicks this turn. Clothesline. Romeo, nice take down there. Over the shoulder judo. Over the shoulder judo toss. Where the heart and a perfection slam out of nowhere. You're a into a back suplex. We're at a oomph, the freak now getting himself out of trouble there. The wrong part of town, Romeo in a bad situation. Quick kick back over to perfection side. And ooh, got shot. Clothesline by the freak. Oh, dump the face. I mean, not for nothing. If I was the Tower of Power, and I'm trying to pull this one home, not to, uh, not to call out Johnny or anything like that, but I would wait until they get Johnny LaBeouf in the ring and then do the best you can to try and keep him on your side of the ring and quarantine him off from the, from the rest of his brothers and beat him down Romeo in trouble and it's Logan that makes the save I'm gonna try to be quick there trying to get another quick in in but Logan saw it coming let's go behind by Romeo clubbing blood in the back I said quarantine cut cut Johnny off from the rest of the team that's what I meant to say that's what I should have said and the sheer power of the the towering Tonga. I call him the walking skyscraper. Seven foot four, 450 plus pounder. Romeo, now look at that. There's some teamwork for you. Tagging in Logan willingly. And Tonga is chucking Logan like he's nothing. And Logan's not a small dude. He's like 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, 280 ish pounds. 
Oh, he just hit him with a folly slam like it was a sack of uh, seeds or something. Hey, Logan, that may be a bad idea. Oh. Looked like Logan was going for Kyle. He managed to sweep on up. Maybe just a little bit of a collision. Wasn't expecting it. Oh, that's not a good idea. He straight slapped Tonga in the face. Oh, we are missing that punch. Tonga getting a little, uh, a little antsy, I'll say. Squaring up a shot. Swinging wildly. And another slap to the face and a third one to the face. I think he's really trying to press to piss, press, piss Tonga off here. Can't get my words right. No, midsection first into the, the corner of the apron there. No, I would say chest, but Tonga stands almost as high as the top rope when he's on the ground. And Logan, two count only there on that one. Gut shot. And Tonga getting tossed. I don't think he's had that happen to him too many times. Take out Logan there, back of the knees. And the champ stuck in Perfection's corner. Logan pacing. Oh, Johnny got a right hand. Why are you going after Johnny? He's probably the one guy that doesn't want to be involved with you. Towering suplex from Tonga. Logan now going to take advantage here. Poor Johnny got taken out. Logan just let it happen. What is this now? Kyle and Tonga. Tandem offense here. Nice. Assisted Butterfly DDT into the launched wheelbarrow. Extra added oomph with uh, the assistance from Tonga there. Johnny's back to his uh, his feet now. That's good to see. Back up on the apron. There's psychological warfare by, by Tonga. Yeah, you know. Not lying, there's Johnny now. Johnny wants to get in and get some, uh, get his pound of flesh back. Got Kyle now. Fire with some carry position. Drops him through first across the rope. I didn't stomp him there. Canvas. Nobody's even there. Kyle Powerbomb! And, oop. Kyle got caught, sweeped out the legs. And Kyle, look at that, right into the ropes. Oh, wait a minute, are there no rope breaks in this one? They did not tell me that. Right, insane. And, oh, right hand. Like in this one. Oh, what the hell is Johnny thinking? Oh, no, Johnny! Think of some dangerous things! From the top to the outside! And two men that probably weren't even thinking they were going to be in a match for a title. Actually, honestly, any of these six men, Minus Logan probably didn't think that they were going to be a title match. Logan was the one that proposed the match to Mr. McGeever. But like I said, before Johnny wants nothing to do with the East Coast champion. He thinks everybody's nuts for trying to beat Tonga for the championship. They straight said it to, Lo to Logan and Romeo that they're nuts for going trying to go after Tonga. Which I, I kind of have to agree with. Kyle Angelo now tagging his brother, the little big brother, 
He is the younger of the two brothers. But he is obviously physically bigger. That's what I call Kyle, the big, or the little big brother. He's older. But he's not quite the same stature as the freak. Freak, now speaking of him. Imperfections corner. Johnny's pacing. I don't understand why they keep pacing when they get somebody in the corner. Mega tag to a double team move and get the win, for Christ's sakes. Win a damn title. There's Cobra Clutch slam by the freak. Johnny able to tip out of the corner quickly in that situation. And snap Mary down and a kick right to the back of the neck. <laughs> Fucking man. And now Logan tagged in. These are gonna come in. Physically dominate! Jesus! Deadlift powerbomb. Logan tore his singlet. I think he got a hole in his, uh, <laughs> the upper part of his singlet. That's a shame, too, that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool color concept that you've got there. Cool. Yeah, Johnny, I was going to say, stop trying to help Logan. I think he's got it on his own here. going to inadvertently hurt yourself. Oh. The freak, luckily, he's wearing that mask. Probably absorbs some of that impact into the apron. And when he landed face first on it, back elbow. Logan now. Look over here. Oh, shoulder mounted powerbomb. Looking for the win. And Tonga. Quicker than lightning on that one. Oh, man. He just laid out Romeo. That headbutt took Romeo down so quick. And got to give Romeo credit. Even though he wants the extreme or the East Coast Championship himself, he came in to play D for Logan. I gotta say, these these two seem to bury the hatchet. They are on the same page. They are working together. I think they may have officially buried the hatchet. Get past this tower of power regime here. Johnny tagged back in. Romeo still out on the outside. That headbutt really did damage. Freak though. Up and over hangs on though. Catches himself on the apron. That right hand. Johnny in the, the wrong part of town. Gonna get tagged in. Is the champ. Oh, they're looking for a compactor here. Jesus, that's a lot of weight coming down. And Tong is still holding for a pin. Nobody realized it. Not even Darnell. Darnell going to look for it again. Two. And oh, that was a close one. Still standing strong here so far. Oh, nice leg sweep there by Johnny. No way. Can he do it? Boston Crab locked in. Johnny's going to freaking win it. And, oh, I got a little overzealous there. The sheer power. All, of, all the strength in Tonga's midsection. Johnny couldn't hold it. Tonga was able to muscle out of it. And to Gary right on the side of the head. Apologies about that interference there. What the hell is going on? Uh, that's weird. I didn't drop any frames. Huh. Apologies there, guys. That wasn't just you. That was all around. I even got that one. But again, it's weird. It didn't show any drop frames or anything. Oh! No matter if we're getting a clear signal or not, Tonga's still whipping 
Johnny LaBeouf's ass. Oh, no. Dolga, free fall on Johnny right in front of Romeo and Logan. He dead stared at both of them. Johnny, though, trying to fight back. Now, single leg here by Tonga. That's a rare, uh, a rarity that we'll see out of him. Johnny, though, able to roll back over. Romeo tagged in now. And, ooh. Big boot of Tonga right in the side of the face of Romeo. Caught. Tonga right underneath the chin. Couldn't get the drop kick, though. Romeo speed coming into play here, but no. Tonga quickly shut that down. Dropped Romeo right on his throat. And now Romeo's going to go for it. The free fall! Kyle tagged in now. Figure four. Reverse style here. Nicely done. Romeo, though. Master technician, just like Kyle. Able to get out of it fairly quickly. And, ooh, close line. Kyle missed it the first time around. Caught him on the rebound. Elbow shot for Romeo. Old float over. And the one neck breaker. Kick to the back. Kyle now crashing to the outside. Bouncing with that corner of the apron. Like a freaking bouncy ball. Romeo goes to the outside to get him right back in. And oh! In a little bit of time that took Romeo to get back in the ring, Kyle was able to jump for the tag, got the freak's hand. But right into a perfection slam. Nice little dance around there for Romeo to get it into position. What a freak, man. Did he even feel that? This guy is ridiculous. The way he could just absorb pain and continue on. Nice takedown by Romeo over the shoulder toss. Again, if you're not in a place that Romeo likes, he'll get you there. Powerbomb with a matchbox cover. And old Tonga breaks it up. And old Johnny inadvertently running into Romeo. Romeo looked like he was set up for a uh, swing out powerbomb there. Or maybe a perfection slam. Like he got on the freak. Into the corner. And oh, went for a splash and missed. And the freak showing his uh, uncharacteristic uh, speed and agility there. And here comes Tonga now. In with a flying forearm to the face as Romeo was pinned in the corner. Romeo now in trouble here. Tag Team 101, constant and frequent tags, and Romeo gets compacted! Break holding for a pin. Logan again to come in and break it up. And the freak going right back into a pin, but Darnell, unfortunately, I think he looks like he's been taken out or he was sandwiched there. He had to take a second to recover. He was hanging on the rope. The freak almost got the pin there. Bye bye, Logan. Bye bye, Johnny. It is Romeo all by himself. Again, look at this. There's the frequent tags here. Look at this. Three-point stance for both men. And oh! A double shoulder tack tackle. And Romeo dove for the tag. Oh! Johnny went for a knee clip and got caught. And nobody's home. Johnny is all by himself! Chopa! Logan, not fast enough! 
Johnny, the unfortunate victim of a choke bomb. When the Tower of Power played the tag team game just a little bit better this time around. Tonga. Still the East Coast champion. And it was Tonga that got the job done. It was just unfortunately against a man that didn't even want to even have an interaction with Tonga. That's a, that's a damn shame for uh, perfection. Uh, they had an opportunity. They couldn't cash in on it. But we're going to move on because it is time for Alex Parker to defend her women's East Coast Championship against this woman right here, Marley. And she has been at battle with not only the DOA, but Jersey's finest with perfection over the past, I don't know, two decades. Those two teams are always intertwined somehow, some way. This time around, it'll be Marley versus Alex Parker. And of course, you gotta think that Alex is gonna have Jessica and Angel in her corner. Now that Angel is officially back, her suspension has been lifted. And she will defend the Tri-State Championship tomorrow night against Christy Garcia in a maximum carnage match. Can't wait for that. And here comes the DOA. <laughs> Alex Parker being accompanied by her best friend and fiance. That's how they do it. I've been saying it for months now. This is how the DOA and Jersey's finest have kept their championships. The pack mentality. It's sickening. Hopefully, Marley will be able to do something to get at least this championship away from Jersey's finest in the DOA. Will this be the last time Parker sets her eyes upon the gold? Arnell now going to present the championship. There it is. The gold is on the line. Here we go. Parker coming out. Swinging, if you will. But literally. She hits a successful Hurricane Rana, but the kick attempt blocked and turned into a dragon screw. Now Parker going to return the favor. A little back and forth there. A little, a little anything you can do, I can do better. Oh, Parker again caught Marley again. These two are going to have some, some knee issues if they keep this up much longer. Successfully get a kick off there. We're gonna miss on the knee. Parker back to her feet. Power slam attempt. No. Whatever. DDT. Now 
Marley has had her fair, I'd say quite a few matches with Parker. Honestly, we all know, most familiar with Angel. Yeah, Dragon Screw City, you're not kidding, O'Connor. Okay. Kick out. Our way. Net breaker. So far, the early going of this match is pretty back and forth here. There's Parker now. Not even on one count. Marley showing some true resiliency here. And, ooh, beautiful Eric Arana. I'm counting the seconds on how long it's going to take either Angel or Jessica to get involved here. So far, so good, I got to say. They actually seem to be behaving themselves. Marley able to sweep out the legs from underneath Parker. And she now launches up and over the top rope. Holy shit. Parker almost took flight there. In dangerous territory here for Marley. You got to be careful. Not only just being on the outside, but being on the outside on that side of the ring. That is Parker's corner. Surprisingly. Angel and Jessica hanging back here, letting Parker handle her business. She seems to be doing a pretty good job. She's got Marley in a key lock right now. For the moment, Marley though, shots to the ribs. And we got that. Fairly even here so far again. Marley, Parker. Back and forth, no one person had too much in the way of control. As soon as one starts gaining momentum, the other one comes right back. And Marley, that was a good pick of the leg there. And, oh, another Hurricanrana. And the jawbreaker float over. Dirty T! And Parker, smart move by Parker to roll to the outside. Marley, though, not so much of a smart move. At, oh! Rogue shot in. <laughs> unintentional contact there, but Jessica seems to be uh, controlling herself. Didn't get involved. Then Parker beat Marley here. Would probably be, would be better psychologically, if you will, than... Uh, Jessica physically beating her, getting a disqualification. Although I still see that see that being an option here if uh, Marley starts getting too much control here. They'll let it go until until one of them can't uh, can't continue on. Lock here by Marley, and that time may be coming soon because Marley is really starting to run away with this match here. And oh, burnt her up by the ears and tossed her. Who eats ice cream in the middle of winter? You're nuts, Mr. Theodore. And I'll roll through here. Nice job by Marley. And oh, the face buster! Leg drop face buster! How many matches is that winner? Realizes the caliber of athlete that Parker is. She continues on with the onslaught. And already. That actually took quite a bit of time. Angel was distracting Darnell. That was a close. That was almost three. That little bit of distraction there by Angel. They have. Oh! What Parker the time she needed and the backbreaker there and here we go Angel now on the apron Darnell don't even care three no and that's a that's a good move there by Darnell not even letting Angel or Jessica be a distraction here he decided to count the pin instead of dealing with them Oh, 
And this switch. Mark trying to regain control here. And oh! And Rogue coming out of the shadows to answer a question about ice cream, of course. Nice head shot block, big right hand. I mean, honestly, I'm not even gonna lie, I eat like Twist, uh, Twist. Twix ice cream bars and uh, Milky Way bars, ice cream bars, all the time, so. I guess I kind of do too. But a big bowl of it? Not really. Parker, I think she's waiting for our lady to get back to her feet here. She's perched on the top rope. Oh, what did Marley to roll over to get an elbow drop on the kidneys? Parker turning up the aggression here. Stomps to the chest. Can you see, I didn't see who slid it in there. Oh, Angel, never mind. That makes a lot of sense. Slid in the chair. Parker now. Got that look in her eyes. Oh, hooks one, hooks two. Oh, and Angel, no! Marley reverses! Marley able to shift her body mid lift. Made Parker over rotate her. And Parker in trouble. Backbreaker! Darnell disposes of the chair. Marley separates from the ropes. Hook of the leg. Deep hook. One. New champ! New champ! And oh! So close. Parker showing some true resiliency there. Is Marley going to continue with the onslaught here? Reverse triangle choke. Flips her up and over, put a lot of pressure on that throat as she does it. And ooh. No. Arlay not stopping here. She is on a roll. And oof. Parker is looking out of it here. Marley is in firm control here. No, Marley. Oh, smart move by Marley. Rolled to the outside. Parker was able to reverse there on that attempt. You can see now that the exhaustion is setting in slowly for Marley. Parker already seems to be there. That she's taking a minute here. That's good. No need for her to be over there. Marley, smart move there to get back in the ring before Jessica can pull anything. Fireman's carry, no. DDT by Parker. And Marley is hurting here. Parker is too, but Parker ascends to the top. And Parker nails the Alex Salt. Haven't seen that move in a while. Is it enough? Two! Damn it! Parker had to dig into the bag and pull out the Alex Salt. Couldn't even hit Marley with the, the Angel's wings. Didn't even, or excuse me, the Fallen Angel. Didn't even go for the AKO. Went right to the Moonsault. And it afforded her the damn victory. Mm. One of these days, somebody is going to beat the entirety of the DOA and Jersey. But maybe not one person, but a collection of people will be able to dethrone one day. Here's hoping. We still got. The United States Tag Team Championships, which is coming up next. As we see here, Phoenix, Ron Jacobs, the Urban Warriors, going to be taking on Jersey's Finest's John Viper and Genocide. Um. No, insane. I don't think so. I think every champion is retained so far. 
if I'm not mistaken, I think so. Yeah, I think every champion is, has retained so far. Maybe, just maybe these two could be the first to dethrone the tag team champions. We're going to find out, though. champions before multi-time champions i should say before the urban warriors can they add one more to it is the question i'll tell you what I'm, i know i'm supposed to be on biased commentator and all that but here's hoping if somebody's gotta gotta dethrone jersey's finest and i feel it's gonna be a domino effect if one champion can lose their titles i think it's gonna put a damper on the attitude of Jersey's finest and you know, hopefully that'll topple over the The uh, the monarchy that is Jersey's finest here in ETW Not even the slightest. Of course, Chris Tyler gonna accompany these two to the ring. Gonna make it an unfair advantage. Might as well just call it a three on two handicap match at this point. But it's gonna be Phoenix and John Viper to start us off here. And Phoenix shoots out of the, the corner there. Missed the wheel kick, unfortunately. And... Oh, big super. How do you think everybody's a chump? <laughs> and Snapmare. Well, I'll tell you what, though, we'll see. We'll, well, Tyler will get his medal tested tomorrow because he has to defend his world championship by himself. There will be no help from anybody. He will be locked in the Devil's Playground with Mystique in tomorrow's main event. So we'll see. Maybe that could be the first, the first chink in the jersey's finest armor that gets taken out. And ooh. A rough landing in the corner. That's true, Rogue. You're not wrong. Uh, Darnell may not put up with Tyler's shit tonight and may just kick him out immediately. Man, oh, DDT! I think John Viper did some homework, too, because he... I don't know if he baited Jacobs in, but he saw Jacobs coming for that shoulder check in the corner and John Viper was able to turn it into a DDT. Now, you, you guys know me, I'll never doubt anybody's talent. If they make it to ETW, it means they're talented. And these four men in the ring, five if you include Tyler, are extremely talented, especially tag teams in the ring at the moment. I will never doubt their talent, it's just their attitudes are shit. Jacobs. Big power bomb. 
like the three men on Jersey's finest side, they're more than talented to do it on their own. Oh, it's just they choose not to. And that's what aggravates me so much. And Jacobs! Big power bomb there. Deadlift on that one. <laughs> Rogue, I love, I love how much you're, you're, you're such a fanboy for Johnny. It's, it's so fun. Cause you literally think you can take, and beat, and take every championship and beat everybody. It's, I love your devotion to Johnny. It's, 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 it's quite funny. To me. Danny switch, and oh, elbow to the face. Close line. And, oh, Jacobs. Went for the dive and made it. Phoenix coming in swinging, but missed. Genocide. And look, so far, these guys are doing great. Jersey's finest, of course, I'm talking about. They have had they, they, no interference. And, ooh, none whatsoever. And they are fully in control of this match. They haven't had any shifty tactics. They haven't tried to cheat or anything so far. That was drop kick to the face. Phoenix, genocide right back up, though. As Phoenix got a little overzealous there, tried to power slam, but Genocide able to drop his hips. The block made it a little bit more difficult for Phoenix. Couldn't get the power slam there. It hasn't deterred Phoenix. He's still fighting. Although he's in a precarious position right here. Oh, no. Genocide! This is not going to end. Well, Jesus! You're not wrong. Johnny does have a belt. You're right. He does. He holds the Jersey title. The New Jersey title. But, I mean, I don't want to go that route, but, I mean, if you want to talk about title holds, pretty sure Tyler's got quite a few more than, uh, than uh, Jackie Rogue does. At least here in ETW. I just think it's funny, you put, I could put anybody's name next to Johnny Rogue and you'll be like, oh, he's going to beat him, oh, he's going to beat him, oh, he's going to beat him. It's, it's like he can't beat everybody, Johnny, or uh, Rogue. Johnny can't beat everybody. Everybody has their day. Oh, man. I mean, honestly, one of these days, Jersey's finest is luck is going to run out. I, I think at this point, it's pure luck that they're winning this much. Now, granted, they have lost. They just haven't lost any match when it involves their title. And Chris Tyler hasn't lost a match since his return. Well, actually, that's not true, because he did lose twice to Jester. But since winning that World Heavyweight Championship, he has not taken a loss. Actually, yeah, that's a lie, too. Did Mystique beat him once? Manny, where's our historian? He knows. I think Mystique beat him once, like a couple of weeks ago. Oh! Genocide with a Superman punch out of nowhere! They're trying to keep the pressure on Jacobs. Tags in the big man. John Viper gets Jacob back across to the ring. That's not a time to be clapping, Jacobs. I know you want to get people behind you, but maybe get your opponent on the ground first. And, ooh, clothesline. There you go. That's a good start. And clothesline. Oh, Jacobs is getting the moves together here. Oh, big splash. Yeah, and saying that was not a smart idea to be like I, I get trying to get the crowd behind me and all that, but again, you guys know how I feel about taunting during a match. And here we go. Took Tyler long enough to get involved. Bought his boy some time, John Viper with a reverse DDT. But yeah, uh, it, 
don't taunt in the ring while you're fighting. And two, definitely don't taunt while you're in your opponent's corner. And you got one of them right behind you. And oh, big clothesline. And Don Viper now. Looking to do some damage to the neck there. Neck crank. And Don Viper. Oh! Nice little pump handle into the face buster. You don't usually see John Viper do some fancy moves, but he did a nice one there. And oh, another DDT! This time, though, Ron Jacobs was able to get the shoulder check. And oh, look at that! Veteran instincts by Jacobs grabs the rope. Darnell luckily saw it. As I was saying, though, Ron Jacobs successfully hit that shoulder check, but John Viper was just like, nah. Abs of steel, duty team for your deeds. Oh, the hustle! He hit it! And damn it, Tyler! Now they're trying to mess with the turnbuckle pad here. Jacobs, I think, realized it. Oh, Darnell, unfortunately, getting contact there as Jacobs swung the hit jit aside. May have swung a little out, out outside there because. He literally nipped Darnell, or Darnell was just trying to move out of the way to make sure he didn't get hit. Nevertheless, John Viper gets the tag. Coming in with a big boot. Clothesline. Genocide. He's looking for the jersey driver. Jacob so had it well scouted, nicely done there. And I'll tell you right now, if Tyler didn't interfere there, after Ron Jacobs hit the hustle, it would have been over. And all oh, straight justice! Oh, new champs, new champs, come on, Phoenix, one, two, John, oh, genocide kicked out, kicked out, and if he didn't there, we would have new champs, because John Viper would not have been close, or honestly, that probably would have been a, a, a photo finish there. On top of them, boys. Phoenix looking to line up for something, but genocide blocks. And genocide. Falling suplex. No, a jackhammer. And genocide. Let Phoenix get a tag there. He wants. Oh, Jacobs. That may have been a bad idea. And Jacobs is on fire. A nice exploder. Oh, Jacob's looking for a big splash! Working on the back is Jacobs. Jacobs. <laughs> I can't blame him for taking a breath, but man, you gotta remember. Tag team matches, or even matches in general, if you take a break, they take a break. And another! One more time, hit the hustle! Is it enough? John Viper coming in. No way from Jacobs. Phoenix, unfortunately, still out on the outside. Jacobs tried to grab for John Viper, but all he got was air. And oh, genocide busted open. And nice take down. Back and forth here at the moment. Genocide busted open, trying to regain control here. Doing a fairly good job here in the Superman punch. Phoenix coming in to play D, and he breaks it up. And, oh, shot to the knee. Jacobs, what's he looking for here? Maybe a power bomb? Yes, indeed. Inside though, able to take it in stride. The clothesline did some damage to Jacob back to his feet. Caught him, belly to belly. Oh, big pin, big pin. And both teams knew it. Both teams came in for the save, but Genocide able to kick out. And a, how is that a tag? John Viper was not in the corner. Darnell's allowing it though. And, oh. 
That was an awkward clothesline. Hit Jacobs about mid chest. Looks like John Viper's knee gave out on him there as he was running. Still made connection. I don't know if it was enough. Jacobs here. Oh no. Genocide did this to Phoenix moments ago. Jacobs to return. Jacobs getting his receipt. Oh, I would not. I would not mess with Jacobs right now, Tyler. He is on fire at the moment. Oh. Looks like Jacobs may have bit more than he could chew there. Tried to go for a fall away slam on the 325 plus pounder. Couldn't get him up and over though. John Viper's weight crashing down on top of Jacobs. And of course, John Viper takes full advantage here. Gets him back into the ring. Rolls back in himself. Oh, and a big boot right underneath the chin. It looked like he hit him. The heel of John Viper's boot. Back to genocide. Oh, we're going to see a V2 of the Garden State Nightmare. Normally it's genocide that does the power bomb. And, oh, Phoenix wasn't paying attention, but Jacobs able to kick out and deliver the Hell of an STO there. You know, one of the suplex, but no. An exploder suplex. Genocide was able to block, though. Superman punch! Oh, God. Genocide was stomping the hell out of the, the sternum and midsection of Jacobs there. Genocide looking a little woozy here. Losing a lot of blood. More and more this match goes on. And Genocide still fighting here. Going to sweep out the legs there. Yeah, it's Jacob back into his corner. Could have been a bad day for Genocide. Oh, here we go. We're going to get the regular version now. Garden State Nightmare! Is it enough? Phoenix is exhausted, doesn't realize what's going on! Damn it! So far, the champions are four for four. And that's not just Jersey Finest, that's all champions that have had championship matches here tonight. So far, all championships re retained successfully. But unfortunately, one that I didn't want to see retained. But unfortunately, I, we can't always get what we want, can we? Oh, maybe we'll get lucky here. As we move on. JG. Finally getting another shot at the Tri-State Championship after a questionable title change. Of course, as we know, Jester pulled a fast one on the referee in his Crimson Mask match against JG. What was that? four or five months ago, whenever it was, he was able to pick up the victory, even though he was busted open first. And JG, unfortunately, would lose the title there, but went on to participate in the best of the best tournament. Made it to the first round of the finals. Yeah, made it to the first round of the finals. Unfortunately, took a loss to Marshall. But now he gets an opportunity to get his 
baby back, if you will. He looks ready to go. The question is, though, can he defeat the psychotic clown king in Jester? Got to think he's probably going to have his cohorts with him. I think the rest of the monster squad will be in tow. And I hate it when I'm wrong. Or when I'm right, I mean. Excuse me. Partially right anyway. As we see, we only see Dr. K and Sprinkles accompanying the Tri-State Champion to the ring. As we will see Morgan in action right after this matchup here. She's got a shot at the Women's World Championship. We will challenge Jessica in the next match. Hard to believe that we're almost done with night one of best of the best we got this match and then two others of course as we stated tri-state championship here women's world championship next and then in the main event best friends battle it out for the right to be called the best I like those emotes, Manny. Joker emotes, that's good. I like it. Should get some, uh, some jester emotes. <laughs> no, not quite, Fred. Not quite. And JG looking ready to go. Jester. Looking like Jester. And he looks ready to go. It's going to be a hell of a fight. We know the history between these two. How many titles have they fought over? Tri-State Championship is the most recent one. There it is. The prize on the line. Who is walking out of here with the title? As Sammy's going to officiate this one here. I don't know. go behind by JG. Looks like we're going to get a little bit of a traditional style match here, maybe. At least from JJ. Or JG, excuse me. I don't know where the hell JJ came from. <laughs> Thinking of Marshall. And oh, nice roll through by JG. Find himself up for a drop toe hold. And Jester striking back here, swinging a miss with his clothesline attempt. Russian leg sweep. And a jawbreaker. Clothesline did nothing. Backed him off a couple of steps. JG able to get Jester into the corner, though. If anybody can beat Jester, it is JG. We've seen him do it before. JG gonna meet Jester on the outside. What's the temp blocked? And an STO! And oh, JG landed right on his head! Almost a Sayoto suplex there. Not gonna stop JG though. And oh, big bright. Got caught. Into the corner now. Close line to the back of the neck. Ow. 
I think they be remembered back to their their last encounter. Crimson Mask match. JG successfully busted Jester open, but with his the color is freaking face being it blended in. And remember, J the Jester came out with red face paint. Well, they say it was face paint. I think it was the dried up blood that JG busted him open a couple of nights before. I think it was the day, it? It was two nights before. I think it was the old blood that Jester used. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But nevertheless, JG got cheated out of that title. He sh he probably would still be Tri-State Champion if that didn't happen. And oh! Yes, they landed right on his shoulder. Rebound. Back elbow! Quick pen attempt, Jester though, immediately kicking out. And, oh! Teeth rocking right there. He didn't know what to count. See how many teeth he has left after that one. Jester military is a spine buster. Jester after a big move, looking for the pin. No. One count only. Uh oh, Jester's card. No. No, oh, the Jester just pull off the victory! Two, three, no! JG got a lot of fight left in him. It's not over yet. Oh, big Michinoku driver! Into the corner, JG coming in, clothesline, Jester collapses out of the side, the corner there. What a hell of a redemption tale, JG can pull this out. Oh, look at Jester, float over DDT! Presently, gotta say, Dr. K and Sprinkles haven't gotten involved yet. Oh, Jester! Trying to get a cheap win there. AG though gonna try and continue his onslaught from earlier. We're gonna a little beaten up here. Name is Jester. Oh, nice move there. Oh, wanted full body contact here. Still can't get nothing but a one count. It was a little wasted time there from the transition from the seated pin to the, the full body press with the hook of the leg. A hammerlock DDT. Oh, didn't go for a pin. Usually we'll see him go for a pin after it, but no, he wants the full deal. Lights out. No, Jester saw it coming. Well scouted by Jester. Oh, the headbutt. DG fighting back throw. Big clothesline. Jester, that may be the smart, smartest move he's ever done. Rolled to the outside. Flex himself, gets back in. And oh, that GG face to face. And oh, another headbutt. That one looked like it knocked him out. Looked like the headbutt knocked him out and the punch to the back of the head woke him up. He got that swing out side slam working for him, though. Hey, G fighting back. Overhand right clothesline took him down. JG put a lot behind that one. A knee right to the sternum. JG, he's fighting with everything he's got here. And oh, well, went for a quick stunner, but couldn't get it. He's really looking for them light for that lights out. Float over DDT and oh, it looks like JG may be busted open. Jesterdo's has got that look in his eyes. Oh, was thinking maybe a power slam or something. Nevertheless, JG gets out of it, hooks the arm. DDT! Hammerlock DDT! 
Trying to pull Jester up and think he wants the lights out. And, oh no. Looking to put Jester to sleep here. He's got a rear naked choke. AG, uh, Jester, excuse me, he's struggling here. Trying to keep that, that form away from the throat, but JG lets it go. I think he wants the lights out now. Oh, got it! Lights out! Is it enough? No champ! No! So close! And oh! So close! And Jester now looking to sit on the back here. Going to try and stretch JG out, maybe make him tap. But no! JG still alive. You can say it again that the exhaustion setting in on these two men. Jester having to pull himself up by the ropes. Kick right to the face. JG, knee to the face, into the neck breaker. Gaster almost immediately back to his feet. Swing out. Oh, rib breaker. Jaster looking for a quick pin. Can he get it here? No, he can't. And that is the problem here. Expect a long match here in this one. Both men can take a beating as they have been. Close line to the back of the head. And the neck, and it's not enough. Kick out at two. And signs of exhaustion, signs of the fight. Both men starting to slow down at this point in the match. They're still going here. Needed a gut. And the off the ropes, back at it. Needed a gut. Russian leg sweep in the middle of the ring. Pacing a little bit, maybe trying to figure out what he's got to do next. But not going to be able to do anything as he gets his head closed lined off his body. He's he smart thinking there, jawbreaker. Line for him, block. Then, oh, pick Jester up and slam him down on the top rope. Actually, probably more of a drop down on the top rope. Oh, hammerlock DDT. Can he get it? He got it. He got it. And no. Jester, man, this guy can take un a mitigated amount of punishment. And all he's bleeding, though. Oh, military press into the spine buster. Hey, what's up, Ty? How you doing, man? Guessing work is done for you, good sir. And oh, lights out! Lights out! Yes! One, two, new champion! No! Damn it! So close! And, oh, got shot. Jester looking a little wobbly. Oh, no, Jester scored out of nowhere. And JG is bleeding profusely. And what? JG is still very much alive. Unlike my voice right now. Wow. And oh. toss out of the suplex position there. Jesus. And these two are beating the hell out of each other. And Gaster. Deadlift, gut wrench, suplex. And, oh, flying form. European upcut. Jester. Seems to be in firm control here. This is bad for JG. And, oh, buckle bomb. That, that is not a... 
a good collaborative chant, <laughs> Manny. It's too long. It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I guess it's a good attempt. And God, JG looks like he is spent. So does Jester, for that matter. But in the current situation, is Jester that's up that is on top right now. And a swing out, Yoranagi. A lot of blood loss here for JG. This is gonna definitely. Oh, damn it! I was just gonna say a lot of blood loss here for JG. It's gonna definitely start affecting his performance. And I should have just drove the nail in the coffin myself. What a fight! What a fight! So many times Jester could have lost there. Rack up another win for the champions, man. Not a one surrendered yet tonight. We got two more, though. Great, two more. Yeah, we got the Women's World Championship coming up next. Or no, actually one, I'm sorry. And then we got the best of the best finals. JG, I hope he's okay. He's being attended to right now by the ringside doctors. Monster squad. Happier than a pig and shit. They're celebrating. We're gonna move on. But hopefully... Unfortunately, JG couldn't wrestle the Tri-State Championship away from Jester. Maybe we can get Morgan to win the Women's World Championship here from Jessica Faith. And at least have one champion lose their title tonight. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people were rogue, unfortunately. Just Jester was the better man here tonight. Now, where in the hell did you get that emo, Manny? I like that emo. That's cool. And of course, I was talking the whole time with my microphone here. <laughs> Manny, where'd you get that kick-ass uh, emote? That was pretty cool. But of course, Jessica can't come out here alone. Question is, though, this is going to be, and I always bring this up every time. Morgan Quinn faces off against somebody in either the... Well, I should just say the DOA. I was going to say Jersey Finest, but... <clears throat> when was the last time she faced off against one of the guys? But, um... You always got to remember, Alex Parker and Angel... 
and Morgan were all the original members of the DOA. So, kind of curious here to see how uh, those two will react here. Against the former friend and DOA member. Gotta remember, it was actually the feud between Alex Parker and Tyler and Angel Tyler that turned Morgan into what she is today. Basically, drove her insane. There goes Jessica to the outside already. I'm cracking off the apron there. And oh, Jessica grabbing one of the pigtails there. Just can to get the win, I guess. Even though it's not a. Hmm. I didn't say not illegal, but definitely frowned upon. Other than me. Quinn is going to have to let her unpredictable nature dictate this match. Oh! That's going to really turn up the aggression here. Ooh, right hand. This is Morgan's opportunity to try and gain control here. And it slips out, does Jessica? That's a. I always say that, that that's a that's a an odd camel clutch to go to. It gives no no structure to keep the hold in place. One. Honestly, if I had to, if I had to describe fighting against Morgan Quinn, I would say it's literally like trying to solve in a Rubik's cube that's fighting back. To be honest, <laughs> it's like you're trying to figure out the puzzle, but the puzzle on it is it's constantly and always changing, no matter what you do. Here's a true test. We'll see. Will Angel get involved here? As Jessica trying to adjust herself on the ropes here. Waiting for Quinn to get up, it looks like, maybe. Angel. Oddly close to Quinn here, but she's not doing anything. Darnell's up to four. Quinn back to her feet. Jessica! It was a messy hit, but she got some of it. Didn't get the second there. And it looked like Angel, although a bit late, maybe tried to pull Quinn out of the way. As I said, there is a, uh, a former friendship here. Like, when the friendship ended between, originally I should say, between Alex Parker and Angel, Quinn was caught in the middle. Neither Angel nor Alex ever ended their friendship with Quinn. It's just she kind of lost her shit and disappeared and then came back with Jester and... Oh, God! So, I mean, I honestly don't know if there's still friendship there. I don't see why not. Oh, God, again. No, there's there's no relation, Rogue. She was just obsessed with the... the Harley Quinn character. That's all it is. It's like, um... What the hell did they call it? Um... Identity. What the hell is it called? There's some kind of like psychological thing where you think you're a fictitious character. Oh, wheel of, wheel of faith dodged and missed. I mean, 
taking back control here. Yeah, but there's a specific name for it. I forget what it's called. Morgan swinging it and already falling. Jessica hitting nothing but air. Oh! Wow! Not only would... What a win this would be! Two! Three! No! How bad would it have been to not only lose the championship, but lose it to your own move? Why would you say that, Rogue? No. Not at all. Why would we need a Joker in ETW? We got Jester. And oh, there's the Wheel of Faith! Is it enough? Damn it! I, I can't handle it, man. <laughs> oh. Well, that officially is Jersey's finest slash the DOA. They're three for three in championship defenses, but. Tonight alone, every single champion has retained here on night one. The best of the best. Shut up, Manny. <laughs> Although that is not the end of the festivities for tonight. Hell of an attempt by Quinn there, though, man. There's a few times she almost won it. Fortunately, though, it was not enough. As we see there, Disc of Faith, the final hit. Wheel of Faith locked and secured the victory here. That pin. celebrates here we are gonna move on because it is time for the main event of the evening it is the finals of the best of the best tournament a tournament that has been going on for the past what three months now two and a half months something like that and it will be Best friends, brothers in arms, if you will, Billy Paragon. He'll be taking on Vince Crow to determine who is the best of the best in the men's division.
when I get a chance to say it out loud. This is my only condition. I don't want no one's permission. Shut up and listen. I'm only saying it once, so it wasn't on me if you missed it. I'ma shut down your division. Sick and tired of the people in higher positions. The entire opposition. I'ma fire with precision. I got enough ammunition. go best friends fighting here tonight underway and paragon coming out the gate strong and i managed to talk to both of these two men earlier today both are coming into this with the same attitude pretty much no matter what happens here tonight they do not want the friendship to be in jeopardy they both bring in their A game. So whoever wins, they're both going to respect it. Oh, man. Paragon is bringing the speed here tonight. Just double leg by Crow. For a bit of offense that we've seen from him here. Nice little onslaught there by Paragon in the beginning. And oh, man. Oh, man. Nice kick to the jaw there. Those men, you got to think, are going to lead into their oh, their strong suits. Those speed and agility. Pro, of course, is power. And got caught there to Paragon. And, oh, look at this. STO. A little too close to the ropes, though. Sammy calling it. Bro, right back out of here, back to the neck. Now we'll have to see as Pro for pinfall there. Couldn't even get a one count. Paragon got the early on slot. Now it's Pro who's in control. And Paragon now trying to come back here. Bouncing, Par uh, excuse me, Pro's face off the turnbuckle pad. Yeah, he's, he's bouncing his own face off the turnbuckle. <laughs> and Paragon showing some power of his own here. Look at that. Up down throat first across the oh top rope set him up perfectly for a springboard moonsault and a quick pin attempt and one count he said shoot Aka greatness on the screen I don't see Chris Tyler nice take down there by Paragon with like Crow is going for a single leg takedown Paragon was able to sidestep it but did not sidestep the DDT there And here comes Crow with his power! Deadlift power bomb! Crow uncharacteristically going to the top rope. Paragon kicked up! Oh! I think Crow was trying to go for a Hurricanrana, but a little bit of a back step there by Paragon and the undershot from Crow. Paragon. Oh! Taking advantage of it though. Another springboard! Oh! Paragon just overshot Pro there by like almost an entire two or three feet. Pro, of course, going to take full advantage of that. Hitting these shots here. Oh, one to the jaw. Here comes the technical side of Pro's onslaught. Oh, and a double knees to the kidney. Going back to the neck. Uh, 
Aragon, though, able to rotate to his knee. Oh, good shots there. And, oh, got caught. Big elbow to the forehead, though. Bro's got to watch out. I'm sure that wound on the forehead is still healing here, even though he doesn't have a bandage. Oh, Paragon. Camel clutch. Stretch. And, ooh. And, oh! Paragon to the outside. He crashed hard. A shot buckles Paragon over. Paragon no blocks it. Close line takes down Crow on the outside. Paragon leads him in to the neck breaker. <laughs> Back into the ring. Now now children. Paragon breaks the count. Oh, Paragon again, trying for another Cobra Clutch stretch. Looks like he's got it locked in this time. Pro struggling, but Pro as well. Couldn't even get the words out of my mouth before he reversed it. He utilizes that move too, so he's got to know the... Oh! The easy way to get out of it. That was a nice back suplex. Paragon almost landed on his head there. And Pro again, uncharacteristically, going back to the top rope. Not often we see him go to it. Oh, again, missed. Double takedown. Double leg takedown, excuse me. Paragon, look, he, he did get his guard up for most of those shots. Oh, Crow! No! Paragon! Nice reversal there. Able to... Able to adjust mid-move. Oh, God! I was gonna say, Paragon was able to make Crow over rotate on that lift for the Yokai. And an elbow right to the, I wanna say the spine, maybe the kidneys, as Crow was getting up. And oh, super kick to the face. Two, and oh, that was a close one. Sammy was right there, though. And another one! Out here like DJ Khaled looking for another one, and he got it. Quick roll out by Crow, or Paragon, excuse me. Able to come back in. Air raid. I want to say that was a siren crash. I don't know. Too similar <laughs> to, to tell the difference. I honestly forget. Crow coming back here now, side headlock. And of course, got to throw his little flare on it. Like Romeo does, like VIP does. Can't just do the side headlock, got to do a headstand with it. And, oh, big right hand. And oh, double knees to the back. Looks like Crow's trying to go for a a back elbow another air raid I, I, I mean I, I get the double axe handle to the face it does damage but what the hell is that leading up to it <laughs> why why do you have to do a little dance before it just drop it right into his face like like Marty Skrull spinning around before he does the chicken wing. No reason for it. Like, okay, but, like, you say it's for momentum, but no. <laughs> but oh, nice dodge there by Paragon. Hit the Pele kick. Put Crow on his ass. But he's back up. He's still putting on a hell of a clinic right here, right now. And, uh, of course, I say that, and then he swats dirt into his face. Pro again for the third time in this match going to the top rope. Not a smart idea to try and match high flying ability with someone like Paragon. And, oh, 
devastating fisherman driver. And, oof. Dropped right on his head. I say about time, I'll say it about meditating. It's not the time to do it during the match. Then your chi before it. And, oh, face first in the mat. Now putting some extra pressure on that neck. Both men starting to get to that point. Their exhaustion setting in. Oh, the hell of a right. Oh, Paragon. He's to the spine. Oh, and a DDT. Oh, Crow. Got that look in his eyes. Oh! Out of nowhere! Is it enough? Crow moving on! No! I say moving on when this is the finals of the men's best of the best tournament. I should say, is he moving into the number one contender spot for the World Heavyweight Championship? Lock that pump knee. Oh! Hey, oh, swing and a miss on the calf kick. You can definitely see the signs of exhaustion. And they are creeping in. And, oh, got the drop kick, but no, Paragon! Not only caught it, but hit the double stomp, and that one landed right on the stomach. Key lock here. Above the head. Oh, that's smart. Making Crow's body work against him as he lifts him up. Trying to separate that shoulder. And Crow, he's like, what, 250, 260? So that's a lot of, a lot of weight and pressure to put on that shoulder joint. And, oh, big boot! Right to the face! And, oh, Crow, look at this. Trying to get a cheap win. Really? Against your friend? Even against your friend, I guess there's no rules. Dodging that kick there. Throw hard into the corner. Paragon repositioning here, top rope. And, oh, kick to the face. Back Paragon off, blocks the shot. And, and back and forth, these guys are putting on a hell of a fight. And, oh, DDT! Well, I mean, yeah, Billy's been trying to kick him and successfully been kicking him the whole match. I don't know what your point is, bro. Paragon. And, oh! And, oh! Miss! Nice dodge there by Par or uh, by Crow, excuse me. And, oh, reverse triangle lock here. Paragon struggling a little bit, but, oh, stays with it. Rolls over. And, oh, missed. Block shot there. Crow coming back with shots of his own. And we are deep into this match, and that was a stomp from hell. Jesus. These guys are pushing a 20-minute mark here almost. And oh, Cobra Clutch stretch. What is Paragon called? I think he calls it the Asylum. And again, Crow utilizes this move sometimes too, so he knows the reversal. He's able to break the hold. And, oh, a little too close there. Crow couldn't utilize any opportunity off that whip. Ah, see, I'm learning. And, oh, man, another, another hard crash to the outside. The Paragon there from Crow. There by Paragon. And, oh, step over wheel kick. Three. Bringing Paragon back in. And why did my alerts not go off? That's weird. 
But nevertheless, Richard Laws. 69. Nice. Thank you for the follow, sir. How you doing tonight? And welcome to the Extreme Alliance as Crow. Oh, that was close. Crow's got that look in his eyes. He's lined up for something big here. There it is! Still can't pronounce the name of that finisher, but he's got it! Is it enough? It is! Vince Crow is your 2022 Best of the Best winner! What a fight that was! I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think that was match of the night for the first night. Minus the signal interference, do apologize here. It's a little windy. It's severely windy out here in Chicago. And of course, as I say that, the signal gets cut out again. <laughs> What a fight. Yeah, I think I got it figured out now. Let them know what I'm about now. I'm thinking about changing the route now. I'm looking outside of that. Amen. Man. Welcome to the stream. Raining, but I've been looking at a drought now. The door has been open. Just wait for the moment. I get a chance to say it out loud. This is my only condition. Justin, you're not wrong, man. That was a great match. That was a hell of a match. That was a barn burner, as good old JR would say. And there is the man. The man that has won the opportunity to face off against who will ever be champion after tomorrow. Will it be Mystique or will it be Chris Tyler? That unfortunately is the end of the show for tonight, guys. But thank you for coming out. Do not miss tomorrow, 8 p.m. start time for best of the best night. Two, we will find out who will one be the world heavyweight champion, and two, we will find out who will face off against Jessica Faith at spring break when we see Yuna Katsuyori and Aseo Ikara go face to face in the women's best of the best finals. But of course, we have to give a shout out to the great men and women who provided the themes for the show here tonight for the wrestlers as well as our executive and show producers as we saw depicted earlier and of course thank you to all of you guys for coming out each and every week and checking out the show uh every, tomorrow night though we will be taking a